Boris Johnson will challenge Brussels to follow UK laws as part of any future trade deal as the Prime Minister turns the EU's demands on their head. The Prime Minister's chief negotiator challenged his European counterparts to respond to similar demands they have set out that would see the EU policing UK state aid rules, regulating UK taxes and permanently aligning Britain with its standards. In a speech tonight at the Université Libre de Bruxelles, David Frost said, We bring to the negotiations not some clever tactical positioning but the fundamentals of what it means to be an independent country. It is central to our vision that we must have the ability to set laws that suit us, to claim the right that every other non-EU country. So to think that we might accept EU supervision on so-called level playing field issues simply fails to see the point of what we are doing. It isn't a simple negotiating position which might move under pressure, it is the point of the whole project. That's also why we will not extend the transition beyond the end of this year. At that point we recover our political and economic independence in full, why would we want to postpone it? In short, we only want what other independent countries have. Mr. Frost, who has been put in charge of dozens of officials as part of Task Force Europe, will negotiate the UK's future terms with Brussels. Addressing academics and students, he said Britain would maintain higher standards on workers' rights, environmental protections and health than many of the EU's remaining 27 member states. In talks with Michel Barnier, the bloc's chief negotiator, he will argue that the UK already has a higher minimum wage than 23 out of the 27 EU countries. Mr. Frost said, Boris Johnson's speech in Greenwich two weeks ago set out a record of consistently high standards of regulation and behaviour in the UK, in many cases better than EU norms or practice, how would you feel if the UK demanded that, to protect ourselves, the EU dynamically harmonise with our national laws set in Westminster and the decisions of our own regulators? The more thoughtful would say that such an approach would compromise the EU's sovereign legal order, that there would be no democratic legitimacy in the EU for the decisions taken in the UK to which the EU would be bound, and that such regulations and regulatory decisions are so fundamental to the way the population of a territory feels bound into the legitimacy of its government, that this structure would be simply unsustainable, at some point democratic consent would snap, dramatically and finally. But after a dramatic challenge to Brussels, Mr. Frost conceded that Britain would sign up to open and fair competition provisions based on the bloc's other free trade agreements. He called on the bloc to build on its current relations with Britain. The reason we expect, for example, open and fair competition provisions based on FTA precedent is not that we want a minimalist outcome on competition laws, he said. It is that the model of an FTA and the precedents contained in actual agreed FTAs are the most appropriate ones for the relationship of sovereign entities in highly sensitive areas relating to how their jurisdictions are governed and how their populations give consent to that government. So if it is true, as we hear from our friends in the Commission and the 27, that the EU wants a durable and sustainable relationship in this highly sensitive area, the only way forward is to build on this approach of a relationship of equal. David Frost also said, in a country like Britain where institutions just evolved, it was going to feel a bit unnatural to a lot of people to belong to an organisation whose institutions were created by design. That's why take back control became such a powerful slogan. To be honest, that's not really understood here in Brussels. So many commentators seem to find it odd that people from would support Brexit. We were never really in my view committed to the same goals at all. Some people now argue the UK had itself in the sweet spot on in the Union, carelessly cast aside in 2016 that's not entirely realistic, the UK was like a guest who had enough at the party and was trying to find a way of slipping out. We, were, we never knew what we really wanted to achieve other than stop other countries doing what other countries wanted to do. It's so bizarre that people told themselves that Britain was winning the arguments or the EU as a British project. It's clearly not. Brexit was a reality. Take back control was the slogan because we had lost that control. Barnier said last month that Brexit was always damage limitation. I believe that's wrong and I will explain why.
This unproven decline in trade will have implausibly large effects on British productivity in the future. But that's evidence that productivity drives trade. The tough words from the UK's negotiator will be seen as a challenge by France's President Emmanuel Macron, who is understood to be prepared to pursue a no-deal scenario. Paris wants to make any deal conditional on European trawlermen being granted continued access to British fishing waters. Mr Macron also wants tough terms imposed on future access to European markets for the City of London. But Germany is pushing for a more balanced approach to the EU's demands. EU ambassadors are expected to conclude the bloc's negotiating mandate on Wednesday with the level playing field still an outstanding issue. They are hoping to conclude their internal discussions so Mr Barnier's guidelines can be adopted at an EU ministerial council on February 25.